So the putting on the mass, you know, yes, by taking out these other trees, he is going to then feel comfortable. It's kind of like a human. If you have your air and everything, you, you survive and you thrive. Well. I like to sit down on a rock and just look at What are you oh, looking for? Right there. Oh, there's one plant. That's one sprouting. Yep. He's got a taproot going, trying to get into the soil. Nice. So I, I collected probably 80 white oak acorns this fall during deer season. I planted them. Like They're all about six or eight inches tall right now in my oh, basement. Nice. I'll sell them five bucks a piece. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a batch deal. Well, I'll, I'll collect as many as I want this, this fall then. Yeah. yeah, that's what you want right there. You want regeneration on your oaks. Yep. Acorns right to the ground. That is cool. He's producing that tap root. And I've never seen the, that. Yep, never as long as the that. squirrel doesn't dig him up. Right, right. We'll cover him up. But here's an here's another aspect of TSI though. Think about this. Okay, we've got one we just see right right here in this one area trying to come up. But he's already gonna have competition with this ironwood, which is completely yep. useless. They're junk. Take them all out, everything. He's already gonna you're gonna see some of them. You if you ever walk into woods and you see some of your little oaks and then their top or their crowns already kind of bending or growing out, he's looking for sunlight, but he's yeah. being overcrowded by these junk trees. That white oak right there is bending yep. over that way. He's got those two shagbark kick trees. Your, your grow, you want, your, you want them to grow nice and straight. Well, to get them to grow nice and straight, they have to have a little bit of competition, but they have to have room to grow. By having little trees like this, your junk ones, they don't have the room to grow. They don't, they don't ever fully make it, and then they get a deformed crown. Never really good for log quality. And a stand like this. A big... So another thing like on this. So one. like a hickory like that, would you take that just on TSI and lay it down, or would you add it to the to a logging bit? So he's 18 inch diameter that way. Eight, uh, 17 there. So on something like this, I look across this woods and I instantly see white oak, white oak, white oak, white oak, white oak, some post oak. This is where I, as, as a conservationist, but also a, a forester, I look at it, okay, I have all these nice hickories, they're, mm -hmm. they're really nice and all, but I have a primary white oak woods right here. I like to leave four to six really nice big hickories per acre for the squirrels to keep them, you know, happy and everything. But a lot of your smaller hickories that are in here, like this one right over here, this is a perfect tree. You found another one, didn't you? Oh, yep. yeah. Cool. That's a white oak acorn. This hickory would go. All these little ironwoods would, would go. That elm right there would go. That hickory, those hickories over there. All these hickories are taken away from your white oaks and and taking more nutrients from the ground. So at what point then would, would they take the hickories as part of the logging project versus just laying them down? Well, on, on an aspect like this where you're, you're wanting to select harvest, we always do a, if, if, if the property is, is ready for a select harvest, we do the select harvest first. Let the loggers come in, be really select on what trees they take. Then we would follow up with invasive species treatment, TSI, everything else, and see what, what crop trees are left, which we'll should, should know. Then we'll start, you know, taking out mid-sized hickories like this, because if you look from canopy to canopy up here, this white oak is here is our crop tree. He's phenomenal but he's got competition. This hickory right here is taken away from him. That elm's taken away from him. And then you look over there, you've got another secondary white oak, which let's just say this is your crop tree. 22, 22. Let's say this, this white oak comes out right now. Okay. That white oak is gonna be left. That is your next, re, next generation crop tree right there. Right. So I wanna start taking out all these other junk hickories so we can get nice oak regeneration on the ground. Not hickories, because hickories will overtake a, a forest floor faster than a white oak. But for loggable aspect, for deer aspect, white oaks are the way to go. And uh, that's why we want to take out a lot of the hickories to really open these oaks up for them. I like to sit down on a rock and just look at see Yeah, it is a pretty view. There ain't no views. doubt about that. Man, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. They're 
there's white oaks down through there too. Okay, corn here. He put out a radical. He wasn't quite reaching the ground, so I'll put him back on the ground and see if he does anything. Nice. Uh, was this ever a homestead site? Uh, yeah, we actually found a cistern not far from here, way back here. We were wondering, you know, there has to be an old site. Yep. So this is kind of a, a good, you know, hey, look, this is probably a had a house placed by one by one time, you know, being holly and everything, ornamental tree. Most people planted this. Wow. And then you can kind of see your bigger trees with the, the post oak here and some of the white and everything else. This is probably a homestead site at one point in time, definitely with the sisters. I've, I don't know if I've ever seen a real holly. So they're, yeah, they're green all year, huh? There you go. That's beautiful. My wife will love that. My wife will, they might have to get a pass on PSI. Oh yeah, they don't, we don't take them. Okay, it's the only green thing in the woods. Right now, two weeks from, two two weeks weeks, from now, yeah, you're going to have a lot of them. Be done. Got, to, got another one right over there, another northern red oak, and another one right over there. <laughs> so why would that red oak be dead over there? Well, there could be a lot of factors, you know, but by looking. His crown was for the, for the most part open, but you can see, look at what type of soil you've probably got here. You've probably got more rocky limestone, sandstone soil, so... He probably just wasn't getting the nutrients that he really, really needed to survive in all okay. honesty. And uh, right will they there. take them if they ain't rotten? That one's probably a little bit too far gone. He, they may be able to get an eight foot log out of that one, but it's, I, I don't have my hammer to really test and see what, how it is right now. Okay. We we're talking about where I'm going to make clearings in roads. And he mentioned a couple of things here. One of them is so, this ash. So this is your ash tree right here. You can kind of see. Emerald ash borer's already been in here. If you could flip this, he's not dead enough yet to take the bark off, but if you could, there's tons of little bitty trails right around the outer outer bark and towards the cambium where he's yeah. bur burrowing. He's, he's already killed it. It's just standing dead right now. He may green out a little, but he's dead. Um, but and the rough ones, these kind of look like persimmons though also. They do, but this is a young black walnut. This is a great crop tree. This is a heavy, uh, heavy producer and also too you want to talk about one of the best logs there is for you know for our lumber but also just production this is it this is your crop tree yeah. premier in here so i'll we'll, try to try to pay good attention we can already see right now the russian olives yep. are already trying to green out down here so yep. another thing i always tell people when you're looking in the woods in the winter and definitely late fall early spring if it's green other than like that holly back there it's probably an invasive right, right now. Yeah. So that's what we, what you yeah. kind of need to know. That's how you can figure it out real quick. You still have oaks mixed in, but then you see you have all these hard maples in through here. And you see how oh, many oh, there are. Yeah. Maples are one of your biggest shade producers. They take up the forest floor. You can see just how many you have and how small they yeah, are. Yeah, I see it. This is aching for TSI to be taken out because they are taking over their this in, in, a, in so many years there won't be oaks in here there will only be these hard maples even mm -hmm. though you have your mature oaks over here i see some hackberry over there some shag bark hickory maybe a white oak down there but you can see just how prolific these yeah. hard maples can be as far as taking over a forest floor and producing so much shade that you have no regeneration growth at all coming up besides a native coral berry which is you know at one point in time probably maybe pasture ground at one time like that was up there but kind of filtered in but Look at how bare your, your forest yeah. floor is. There's, yep. These maples are shading out so much that they need to be taken out. Or most of them need to be taken out along with the elms to really get some. What about that big one over there? The What's... big one over there is a great oak. He's, he's your crop tree for right here, but you know. Did you say great oak? No, no, great, he's a great, great oak. Oh, great, okay. Yep, great. Right. He's a great oak. Is it, what kind of oak is that one? Uh, Cherry bark, cherry wow. bark oak, but he's got elms around him. Um, a lot of junk around him for the most part. But Tristan, let's see how big he is. That's got to be at least 36. 40. 36. 34. So 34, 36, somewhere right in there. Yeah. But you know, great. Great, great, great. So tree. on this plot here, when you were saying you want to leave like white oaks, does that mean that would be a harvest tree since it's not a white oak? He's a mature tree. 
he could possibly be at his end line, I would probably take this one. Okay. Um, just because you look up at his top, he doesn't have any galls or anything, he's healthy. But by the time you do another harvest, he may be already gone. Um, I'm looking at what else is around. You have, you have some regeneration from him over here on this other side. So that would be your next harvestable tree right there. Okay. But you have tons of elm, ton, tons of hard maple junk, honestly junk trees that need to come out to really open this up because I'm seeing post oak over there. This is your hard maple. That's probably one of the, you know, prolific, you know, he's what's, he's what's made all these other hard yeah. maples around here for the most part. Oh, that bigger one there? Yep, bigger one right okay, there. Okay, yep. So, but you do have some persimmon mixed in. Nice. All right, let's check out this ridge. He's attached. He's in the ground. He's, uh, he's your next regeneration but coming. Right next to this, with this one here. Though, yep, right? but that's fine. This is that's the same thing as Maple did here. He just grew up right next to oh, it. Right next to this it? is a 20 inch, 20 to 22. He could be select harvested. This could be your next one coming up. I mean, this is a phenomenal property. It's just begging for a good select harvest followed up by TSI and a prescribed burn. You wouldn't recognize this property in two to three years and it will be an absolute whitetail habitat, whitetail hole. Well, that's why you're here, man. That's that's, that's why, why we here. do what we right? do. Yep. yep. All right. Is that uh, any good for anything or what? Not really. I mean, there are logs there. A logger doesn't really prefer it, but they would take it. But I mean, just the aspect of it being a one, two. Well, I could tell you they're hard to get out of the ground with oh, an yeah. excavator. But you, you know, you see stuff, you see trees like this, and you, you think of your old grandpa that used to have a wood stand up in something like right, this because it right. was a yeah. triple or quadruple trunk uh, stem. It's a landmark tree in my mind. And you know, how, what stories could this tree tell in all honesty? Oh, dude, I'm, I'm not kidding you. On one of our Kentucky farms, the property, the meets and bound description was uh, following the ridge top in a northerly direction to the big hackberry tree. Yep. Literally. That's, that's why. Because I, I, I did several surveys, you know, I went with them. And it's stuff like that. Oh, and then it says it goes in this direction to the oak grove. Yep. Well, She's crazy. To, yeah, to me, I wouldn't take this one, even if it was loggable, because, man, look at it. Yeah, that is just cool. It's awesome. It's a neat tree to look. You can take your family and say, hey, look at this tree. But what the stories it could tell, but two, I mean, yeah. it's just an awesome tree. Cool.